on Ubisoft what gives. Two hours of presentations and not one mention of Sam Fisher. For those out of the loop, Ubisoft held their livestream event, Ubisoft Forward. What was strikingly absent was any material relating to the supposed remake of the original Splinter Cell. So it really feels like it's fading into obscurity, which is such a shame as the stealth genre's last great entry was probably Metal Gear Solid 5, and even that left a sour taste in many players' mouths. What we need is a true return to form, and if Ubisoft isn't interested in updating us on these new experiences, we are going to have to rely on reliving what's already out there. Luckily at Naughty Mac Gaming, we are committed to getting classic 2000s games working on your Mac. Now Splinter Cell was one of the first games that I bought for my PlayStation 2 in 2003, and it was unlike anything I had played before. The atmosphere was tense, the levels were both cavernous and claustrophobic, and the shifting stakes and politically driven espionage made me feel like an adult. The closest thing I had played to it at the time was Perfect Dark on the Nintendo 64, and coming into a system that incorporated light and noise meters, rewarded methodical and strategic gameplay, and made every takedown feel like a calculated risk, I truly felt like I was along for Sam Fisher's missions as an agent for Third Echelon. Now it's been quite some time since I parted ways with my PlayStation 2, regretfully traded in years ago for an Xbox 360, and so too did the game collection disappear into the pre-owned game bins outside my local game shop. Now almost 20 years later I found myself wanting to return to the dark and gritty levels of Splinter Cell, but I live in an almost exclusively Apple environment and I'm heavily restricted when it comes to playing games. If you are in a similar situation and want to fire up your thermal goggles on your Apple computer, you're in luck. Now you follow along with me and I'll show you how at no extra cost over the price of the original game you'll get around to sneaking and spying in Splinter Cell in no time. Hey! Apart from owning a copy of Splinter Cell, the requirements are relatively simple. First, and perhaps most obvious, you will need a Mac computer, currently running Mojave OS or upwards. I've personally found the sweet spot to be an operating system between Mojave and Big Sur, but this is just from my experience. Additionally, I do not have direct experience using Macs running M1 or M2 silicon chipsets, but I encourage those who own these machines to give it a try and post in the comments their results. I installed and played Splinter Cell on my 2014 MacBook Pro with Big Sur, the last OS supported by the system. Next, as mentioned earlier, you will need a copy of Splinter Cell. I'll be using the version that can be purchased from Good Old Games, and this is the preferred method of installation. This is because Good Old Games allows you to download the game files directly, rather than rely on a launcher. This harkens back to the days of installing PC games via CD-ROM, but thankfully, Porting Kit will behave as a pseudo-launcher and will keep things organised. Lastly, you will need the aforementioned Porting Kit. This is the software responsible for enabling your Mac to read and understand executable files used in Microsoft Windows. Let's start by getting this software up and running on your Mac. Head over to the Porting Kit website and download the free software. I have left a link in the description below that you can follow to access the website and download the DMG file. Porting Kit behaves like any other piece of Mac software, and for best results it is recommended to add it to your applications folder. Once the installation process is complete, open up the porting kit and navigate to the library page. You will see an alphabetized list of games and applications that have successfully been ported through the porting kit. Please keep in mind that these are not the games themselves, but the means to convert them to be used on a Mac should you have the installation files yourself, or the right to access them. So let's get ourselves a copy of Splinter Cell. As mentioned in the setup requirements, the easiest way to do this is to purchase it through Good Old Games. Good Old Games, or GOG, as well as having a launcher known as GOG Galaxy, enables you to download the game files directly. This means we can bypass any launchers and play the game straight from our Mac. What's important in this step is to not download the game via the launcher, and instead head to the bottom of the screen and select all the files under Download Offline Backup Game Installers. This is a relatively easy one, with only a single file to download as of the time of this recording. Righto, we are in the home stretch. Once your game files have downloaded, return to the porting kit library and use the tool to locate Splinter Cell. Additional instructions and recommendations are listed on the page. 
and when you are ready, use the install button to begin the process. Porting kit is going to do most of the heavy lifting and guide you through the installation with ease. It will remind you to ensure you have the game files ready, which if you've been following along, are already downloaded and are most likely sitting in your download folder. You will eventually be prompted by the installer to select the necessary game file. Use the finder window to navigate the game file and select open. Now, a number of packages will begin to download, so sit back and hang tight. Your next pop-up will have a suspiciously Windows-esque flavour to them, and that's because Porting Kit has done exactly that. You are now running the Windows installer for Splinter Cell. You can now finalise your installation of the game and sit through another loading screen. Once complete, you should be advised that the installation was successful, but make sure not to select that shiny green launch button just yet. It's important that you exit the launcher and allow Porting Kit to finalise the process. You'll be returned to the Porting Kit install guide and eventually be rewarded with a nice green tick. Now, simply hit the play button from the porting kit and Splinter Cell will launch. The initialization time is dependent on your Mac, so you can anticipate wait times of up to 30 seconds, especially for older machines. And there you go, Splinter Cell is loading up and you can get right into your first training day with 3rd Echelon. I'll also mention now that the footage I'm capturing is from my 2014 base MacBook, so I have had to turn a lot of the settings down to get the capture working effectively. Factoring that out, I can typically push medium to high settings with a comfortable FPS. I hope you've found this guide enjoyable. I'm having a lot of fun reliving some classic games from the 2000s without having to drag out my older systems, and also experience better graphics and try out some mods, something I never got to do with my first run through all those years ago. If there is a particular game you are interested in seeing featured on this channel, please reach out in the comments below and I'll see if it can be done. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy reliving or experiencing for the first time the dark and suspenseful world of Splinter Cell.